Effective urban ecological practices can prevent flooding, create wildlife habitat, and of course make these boring concrete jungles a little more aesthetically pleasing. Additionally, urban tree cover is crucial for combating one increasingly problematic phenomenon called the urban heat island effect. The basics of the urban heat island effect are that impervious surfaces, those are surfaces made out of cement or brick or asphalt that water can't penetrate, they absorb radiation from the sun and they release that into the environment as heat. And this is easy to recognize for anyone who's walked across a parking lot barefoot. Some industrial processes generate heat, cars generate heat. According to the EPA, urban areas may see a daily temperature increase of one to seven degrees Fahrenheit. And it depends on time of year, it depends on the size of the city and the amount of tree cover. The research that we've been conducting for the past several years involves understanding how the urban heat island effect changes the pests on trees and understanding why trees in cities are often in such poor condition because of the stress from heat and the pests that come with that heat. Urban tree cover has a lot to do with how hot it becomes. Raleigh, for instance, has about 50% canopy cover. If you go to a city like Queens, where we also have done research, they have about 9%. There's a huge difference in how much heat would be retained. The pests that we study are called scale insects. And so see all these brown bumps on the stem? Oh, yeah. In another month or so, they will have swollen to four times, five times that size. Dang. And they will be full of eggs, two to 3,000 eggs. Scale insects live everywhere. The ones we study are actually native species, so it's not that this is some invasive problem. But for some reason, in cities, they become super abundant to where trees might have branches completely encrusted. And if you get closer, you see it's covered in all these little dimples. And all of these dimples are gloomy scale insects. This insect called the gloomy scale actually produces more eggs as the trees become warmer. Trees in a residential area surrounded by grass might be relatively cool and have few of these insects, and a tree downtown surrounded by pavement might have thousands and thousands. As they get warmer, they produce more and more eggs, which makes their populations grow faster. Another reason they become more abundant is because the scales develop early in the spring when it's warm and actually complete a lot of their development before their predators become active and so they escape their predators because of this difference in climate. A few of them don't, don't matter, but when the tree looks like this, yeah, is that a, that's a big problem. Is this tree at a point of no return? It's not, I don't know about that. Okay. I don't know about that. All of these scales are taking sap from the tree, and so the tree's not getting as much as it needs, and so they come up, they look very sad, they're droopy, the leaves aren't full, the canopies aren't full. Oftentimes they drop leaves earlier than healthy trees in the, in the fall. Two things are working together to make the urban heat islands worse. People are moving to cities, so cities are getting bigger, and then also the climate is changing, which exacerbates the already hot environment of the city. Yeah, so this one's all felt scales as well. But look at where they're growing. They're growing in a little tiny tree lawn surrounded by impervious surface on either side. So yeah. the trees are hotter, the insects benefit from warmer temperatures, and this is what you get. So we're helping city planners and landscape designers try and protect trees in a couple of ways. We've come up with impervious surface thresholds which tell designers and planners how much impervious surface different kinds of trees can tolerate. And so that way when they're planning a new development, if they want to put a tree in an area like a parking lot that's 80 or 90 percent impervious surface, then there's much fewer trees that can tolerate those conditions. But putting the right tree in the right place is kind of the first step in ensuring that those trees will grow. And then we're also working on other pest management tactics to try and reduce pest abundance on urban trees without using pesticides. Pests have played a significant role in shaping our agricultural practices, but with urgency that limited the scope of holistic environmental strategy. As city governments put forth more efforts toward urban environments, 
It is important to carefully consider ideas that allow sustainable growth, not only for our trees, but also our wildlife, cities, and communities.